This video is sponsored by Doug Mocket and Company. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm making a custom poker table slash conference table hybrid. This is my third luxury poker table, but my client wanted something that can act as a conference table as well. So I came up with a really cool way for the top to be mounted to the wall. So make sure to stay tuned to the end to see it. So I'm finishing up all of the fabrication just to make it one solid structure, making sure every panel's flat. Right here, I'm installing some eye hooks so I can easily transport this. I'll just slide a rod through each side and four of us can pick it up super easy. Neighbor Mike brought over his bottle jack because this wasn't quite true. I welded in a few steel tubes for extra support. After everything was all secure, I moved on to welding the outlet on the back side of the unit because I'm gonna install wireless chargers for each player. This actually poses a pretty big challenge because the previous poker tables, I did use the wireless chargers, but they were embedded into the wood racetrack. This time, they're actually gonna be under the felt itself. So I got the middle section on top of the quarter plate bottom, and then I smoked it all in, so it was all one solid unit. One of the main reasons I use the quarter plate bottom is because a lot of these poker tables get really top heavy. So the more weight you have on the bottom of the structure, the better. So I took this really awesome Claro slab and had the customer's logo lasered into it. I really wanted to try and match the colors as best as I could. So I took some super clear tabletop and an array of pigments, both metallic and solid colors. And honestly, I think I came pretty dang close. This is a purple color that I added some metallic pigment to to match the main part of the logo. And then I moved on to the yellow and the white. And then the bottom portion is this gray color that I thought at first was a little too light, but after I laid it all out, it actually ended up being just perfect. When I use this tabletop epoxy, it says 24 hour cure, but I usually give it two or three days. And I think this was day four. I got it all flat, cut the circle out, got all the mill marks off from the bandsaw and did a test fit with some magnets. So this is the second coat. I did two tabletop epoxy coats, one thin one to cover the logo and then another thick one right here just to give it that extra protection. A few more days later, did some block sanding, made it flat, polished her up and she was ready to go. All right, the base is done, the logo's done. So now we're moving on to the wood structure. This is gonna be the top apron plate that I'm gonna use to attach and make flush with the top of the base that will then attach to the top of the playing surface. You might be wondering why I'm using a jigsaw here. This is because the top isn't quite perfectly true and I wanted to use the actual base for a scribe. That way I got it as close as possible. So I did a stack of two, glued them all together. And then after about 24 hours, I unclamped them and did my first test fit. Everything seemed to work out pretty good. So I went ahead and got her down and did all my pre-drilling and mounting with some big GRK screws. They're about five inches long. And I did a little R&D. I used my body weight to test the apron to see how structurally sound it was. And honestly, it was pretty dang stout. There's definitely a little bit of forgiveness in the apron, but most of the movement you see is from the dollies that it's sitting on. So I know you're definitely wondering what I'm gonna do with the edge. We are going to use some Clara Walnut veneer I got from Geo Veneer down in Huntington Park. And this is a trick I learned from my good friend Jim Quinn here in town. You're basically gonna use your regular old Type On 3 and a really hot iron. And essentially you're just evaporating all the moisture this part is very time sensitive, so make sure that you are patient and just take your time. I've used contact cement in the past, and honestly, the results were just subpar. All right, so the edge is done on this one, a little sanding, and then now it's time to move on to the playing surface. So this is an oversized table at nine feet by five feet. So I used my same jig, cut out my half circles, and then used my track saw to rip down the sides. Had Roger help me put on the first piece to see how it looked. And then I use that as my template to make a second piece that will sandwich the wireless chargers on the bottom of the top piece. Moving on to the actual bumper, I cut the larger diameter circle first. That way I still had center structure for the inner one. And then I did the same thing with my track saw and ripped down each side to make the straight cuts. I had to make this part one inch bigger on all sides to account for the vertical parts of the bumper. Utilizing all the scrap pieces, I ripped down some pieces for the vertical parts and did about a bazillion curve cuts. That way I could fit the contour of the bumper. So this part's pretty straightforward. Applied a liberal amount of glue, started in the center and walked all the way down just to make sure everything was flush with the outside edge. Another important part about this too is to keep a ton of pressure on those two pieces. That way you get a really good bond with that glue. Those nails are really just to hold it there until that glue cures. All right guys, if you found any value so far during this video, I would really appreciate and ask for you to hit that subscribe button. It's really important for me that you guys get value out of these videos and see really cool builds. I'd be so very grateful for your sub, but 
I also have an ask to give me feedback, shoot me questions or comments or concerns below and really tell me what you're looking for or anything you would like to change in these videos. Okay, so the bumper you saw fits great. I left enough room for the upholstery and foam to fit up underneath. And now I'm moving on to the rings. So I did another bazillion curve cuts, did a two stack of birch plywood and started the ironing process with all the veneer. Each ring I used one piece of veneer and alternated the grain on each piece that I was gluing down. That way it looked continuous all the way around. This part was definitely painstaking. Tons of time and tedious work to get these all lined up correctly and sanded and to look seamless. So I pre-mounted all the rings, took them off one by one to make the angle cuts on the top two and the bottom two. I actually ended up making this angle cut just a little bit more steep as you'll see here when I turn it around. It's at more of an angle to account for the circular logo. So I got most of the wood structure done and since I designed the file for all of the logos for the felt and for where the cup holders are going to go, I had Sinorama trace out that file onto some parchment paper for me. That way I knew exact placement of where to drill the cup holders and the actual charging spots. But as you see here, I'm drilling this first hole a half inch too close to the playing surface. So. I remeasured them and cut out all of the other holes first. Then I had to turn some pucks to fix my mistake. So after I got them all the size, I glued each one in individually with some star bond so it cured really quick. Clamped it down, got it all sanded flat, and then I remeasured it and then recut to match all the other holes, and we were good to go. Thankfully, this mistake wasn't going to be visible. The bottom of this plank surface was going to be stained black, so you'll never see it. And then obviously, this is going to be covered with some foam and leather. All right, the hardest part of the build, in my opinion, was getting these chargers in the right placement to match up with the printed felt that I was getting from Custom Table Felt. So Doug Mockett is a huge supporter of the channel, and I've also been an ongoing customer for about five years now. So normally with these wireless chargers, you have to recess these pucks a little bit below the top surface, but this is something very new that I wanted to try. And after doing a test piece, I drilled the hole completely and tested out using eighth inch closed cell foam with the felt over it and the chargers work flawlessly. So I've used these chargers numerous times, but I saw this trick from Keith Johnson at KJ Sawdust and he uses track saw to just rip a line and create a channel for the cord just to sit down in. It's fast and efficient and it works great. So I use a Sabernet 10 port connection system so all of these can plug into one unit. Did a little wire management and then I test fit the bottom pieces to make sure everything sat flush and nothing was in the way. As you can see I cut a two inch hole in the center to account for the wires to come through as well. Something I had to consider is these chargers could go out at some point so everything has to be serviceable. These bottom plates were just screwed in I did not glue them so that way if one does fail down the road then I could take it apart replace it and everything will be good to go. But for the record, I've had zero fail out of 50 that I've used over the past five years. All right, so I made one last bottom wood plate. I edge banded it, stained the top and bottom black, and I moved on to the bodywork for the steel base. This part of the process I didn't show because I had to go back and forth between here and my buddy's paint shop. So initially I started with body filler, block sanding and then about four or five coats of primer with block sanding in between and it was a full automotive style paint process with the base coat of black and then a clear coat and then I brought it back and started the wet sanding process to then polish it up to glass like shine. I've done this process for the last two poker tables as well and it turned out really good. This one I got a lot less runs than the last one so I didn't have to spend as much time fixing the errors but the polishing process definitely takes a while. I went from about 600 grit all the way up to 5000 grit again just to make my polishing life easy. So I think it came out really good. Like I always say, nothing's perfect, but you strive for perfection, settle for excellent. So in these automotive finishes, it's a little bit different. After a couple weeks of cure time, I'll start the polishing process with like a stage one and two, and then I'll let it sit for another week and then redo the stage one and two because I get some dye back in the finish, which basically just means that some of the glossiness that you were able to achieve will kind of dull out a little bit. So I got it pretty good to where I wanted. I did have to do a few touch-ups here and there, but now it's time for the rings. So this bottom one being the only way it could be assembled was to slide it down. A little bit nerve-wracking, but we acquired the result with no scratches. 
You're also going to notice that the wood is all finished out already. When I was at the paint booth spraying the base, I ended up just going ahead and spraying these with the conversion varnish that I typically use on all my furniture. Projects like these are super time consuming and they take a lot of effort to get right. So this is the most exciting part about the entire project, seeing it come together for the first time. I got all the rings on successfully, all mounted from the inside with screws. Carefully put down the top piece apron, got it all screwed in and secured. Lastly, installed the custom logo, gave it a wipe down, and bam, there it is. The base is complete. So the big moment of truth. Got the top back from upholstery, custom table felts, die sublimation process came out wonderful. Got the custom bumper with European leather and the cup holders installed, and it looks wicked awesome. But before I give you a full on close up look, we still have to make the conference table. Let's go. So I've used these sunburst tabletops in various projects over the years from GL Veneer, and I thought it would be super rad to use one of these and map it out with the same profile and have it just sit over the top of the entire poker table to work as a conference table. So when you get one of these sunburst tops, the joints need a lot of work. So I use a combination of walnut sawdust, CA glue, and before I even put any glue on the surface, I always spray it with a rattle can lacquer that way when you're sanding it comes up super easy. So after I got all the joints worked over, I started the veneering process on the edge banding. On this one, I didn't just do one wrap of veneer. I ended up doing a stack of four. So after about four or five days of veneer and edge banding, I sanded all the tops and bottoms off and got the back ready for the French cleat. So I took four pieces of walnut plywood, glued them all together, and I cut 45 degree angles on each one of them. One I'm installing on the back of this piece and the other one I'm going to be installing on site on the wall where it's going to be hung. These little blocks that I'm installing are actually stops so when the top is hung on the wall it won't lean forward. So I got the edge all taped off with Tyvek tape. That way I didn't get any overflow during the pouring process. But here's the money ticket. What we've all been waiting for super clear tabletop going on first coat and it just brings the sunburst to life one of the cool things about these pieces is geo veneer hand makes these in-house they have a team of veneer experts that literally hand cut these veneer sets by hand and inlay them to look like this magical sunburst probably one of the cooler things that i've experienced doing woodworking over the past eight years so i got my first coat laid out had to use the heat gun to help level everything as best I could. It is actually really tough to get any sort of epoxy with this type of surface area to get perfectly flat. So I had to let it cure for a few days and then I jumped on to block sanding it to help get all the high spots off. So I started with 80 and I finished all the way out to 320. When you're doing block sanding like this, it's really important to go one direction and then go the opposite direction after each pass. It really ensures keeping it as flat as possible. Okay, so round two, got all the epoxy going on. I did the pizza sauce method as uh, Cam does at Blacktail. Still wasn't able to get it perfectly flat, so I had to re-block sand it after that cured. I had plenty of material to work with, so I worked for probably a week on doing this all the way through the grits, and this was all getting a high polish as well. So right here you see it's roughly about 3,000 grit, and I'm just getting ready to start the polishing process. Uh, but I will say this is probably the last polishing job I'm gonna do for a while because I'm polished out. However, I've only done one other high gloss sunburst before, and that was for a ping pong table I did a couple years ago, but I use a different finish. So this is the first time seeing it with epoxy. And honestly, it's really cool to see it come to life going through each part of the process here. And it definitely gives you that satisfaction of all the hard work you've been doing the past month, month and a half. All right guys, so I have a question for you. Normally I post the price either in the title or in the comments. It's something that I typically don't hide because I love to be transparent. But on this one, I'm not going to quite yet. I want to see if you guys can guess it. I've got roughly 350 hours in this build. Month and a half total, all in all, to finish this. But I would really love your insight to see if we're kind of on the same page with a table like this. So go throw a comment down below. Let me know what you think this project costs all in for the customer. If you get it right or the closest person, I'll pin the comment and I'll give you some kudos on the next video. Okay, so here's the first look. The top is sat on. It's the first time I've seen it as a full unit table, and I am just blown away of how cool it looks. You know, I modeled this on the computer to make sure 
uh, proportions were right and it looked okay, but it always does look a little different in person. But I'm super happy with the turnout and I'm so pumped to get this inside. Let's go, baby. So I was solo this trip, so I had to set up a tripod. Started by getting the French cleat installed in the middle. Drilled all the holes through the brick and used this A7 Plus concrete adhesive for the anchors just for a little bit extra support. After I got this thing fully installed, then I went and cleaned off the felt to get any dust that was on there for the transport. And then I wanted to give you guys some idea of how this whole thing worked. Go all the way down. Just keep it somewhat high. There you go. Come off the edge. So just go flat against the wall. My way a little bit more. Uh, yep. Is that flat? Yep. Flat down. Flat down. Okay. Is it in? Uh huh? Okay. <laughs> Come on. It's always going to be based on anyway. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, we saved the best for last. Here's the final look. Everything in place. I left the sunburst on the wall as they wanted just to get an idea of what the whole thing looked like altogether. So I think this is really cool. It's functional art, but also it can be put on during the day for business. And then on the weekends when they're playing poker, they could throw it on the wall and have some fun. So I think one of my favorite things about this project on the final outcome is how the Doug Mocket charging lights actually still emit through the closed cell foam and the felt top. And this was totally unexpected. That's why I had the logos printed in the first place because I didn't think those would shine through, but I was happily surprised. Also, big thank you to Doug Mocket for sponsoring this video. Not only do they carry these wireless chargers, but an array of wireless charging products, grommets and wire management, door and drawer pulls, and even furniture legs and a caster selection. I'll be sure to list all of the products that I use in this entire build, including these chargers from Doug Mocket specifically. But like I always say, get out there and build something. Cheers.